Welcome to the second Math Skills series on navigation. In this episode, we'll take a look at another use case where UI components such as action bar, button tabs, or a drawer are used to navigate between different parts of an app. So, how do we integrate navigation with these UI components? Through click listeners to manually trigger navigation actions? No, no listeners required. Instead, Navigation UI class can help you to navigate between different destinations by matching destination and menu IDs. Let's dive in and see how that works. In the previous navigation series, Chet developed an app for tracking donuts. But what goes well with a donut, besides a second donut, is coffee. So we should really add functionality to track coffee as well. If you want to follow along, you can download this repo, which contains all the changes on the Donut Tracker app to start with Navigation UI. To add this feature, I can copy the Donut-related classes into a new package and rename them. This might not be the best approach for a real app, but helps us quickly add coffee tracking functionality to the existing app. With these changes, I also need to update the navigation graph with the new destinations and actions from the coffee fragment to coffee dialog fragment and from selection fragment to donut fragment. I'll use these destination IDs later. With the navigation graph updated, we can start to tie things together and enable navigation to selection fragment. The app currently has an options menu, which does nothing. To make it do something, in the onOptionsSelected function, I need to call onNowDestinationSelected for the selected menu item and pass in the Now controller. This function will navigate to the Now destination associated with the given menu item as long as destination and menu item IDs match. Now that the navigation controller knows about the menu items, I match the menu item IDs with the destination IDs which I created earlier. With this, navigation is able to map the menu items with the destinations. The app now navigates to selection fragment. Next, let's configure the app bar to respond to navigation events too. We would like the title to be updated and show a back button when we are on the selection fragment. First, I need to add an app bar configuration object, which is used by the navigation UI to manage the behavior of the navigation button in the upper left corner of your app. This button changes behavior depending on your destination level. For example, when you are at the top level destination, the up button is not displayed since there is no higher level destination. By default, the start destination of your app is the only top level destination, but you can define multiple top level destinations. For example, in our app, I can add both donut list and coffee list destinations as top level destinations. To do this, I go to the main activity class and get an instance of nav controller and the toolbar. Next, I validate whether the set support action bar function is called and update the toolbar reference passed to this function. To add navigation support to the default action bar, I call the setup action bar with nav controller function. This function expects two parameters, the nav controller and the app bar configuration. Next, I overwrite on support navigation up function and call navigate up with app bar configuration on nav host fragment to support up navigation or showing the menu icon depending on the current destination. Now I navigate to the selection fragment and you can see that the label is updated and the back button is shown, which will let our users go back where they come from. This doesn't look too bad so far, but the app doesn't have a way to navigate to the coffee list fragment. I'll fix that next. I'll start with adding button tabs. 
To do that, I add bottom nav menu XML and declare two menu items. Navigation UI relies on the item IDs to match the destination IDs from the navigation graph. I also set the icons and the title for each destination. Now that the menu items are ready, I add the bottom navigation view to the layout of main activity and set bottom nav menu, which I created earlier, as the menu property of bottom navigation view. To wire up the bottom tabs, I pass the nav controller to bottom navigation view by calling the setup with nav controller function. To keep things more organized, let's do that in a new method and call this method in onCreate. Notice I didn't call any navigation action from the navigation graph. Actually, the navigation graph doesn't even have a route to the coffee list fragment. Like I showed earlier with the action bar, bottom navigation view automatically handles the navigation for us by using matching IDs of menu items and navigation destinations. This looks great, but if your device has a large screen, bottom tabs might not offer the best user experience. To fix this, I'll use another layout file, which has a qualifier to target larger, wider devices. This layout already has a toolbar and a fragment container view similar to the default activity main layout. I need to add a navigation view and also add nav drawer menu as the menu attribute of the navigation view. Next, I'll add a divider between navigation view and fragment container view. With this, the navigation view is always on screen on widescreen devices instead of the bottom navigation view. Now that the layout is ready, I create a nav drawer menu XML and add the donut list and coffee list destinations as a part of the primary group. As the final menu item, I add the selection fragment destination. Now that the layouts are ready, let's switch the main activity and set up the drawer to work with the nav controller. Similar to what I did for bottom navigation view, I create a new method and pass the nav controller and the navigation view by calling the setup with nav controller function. Finally, I'll add a call to this method in onCreate. Now, when I run the app on a widescreen device, I see that the navigation drawer is set up with the menu items since the menu item IDs match the destination IDs in the navigation graph. Notice how the back arrow is automatically displayed on top left as I navigate. If you want to, you can change the app bar configuration to include the coffee list as a top level destination as well. That's it. Well, at least for this episode. Donut Tracker app didn't need bottom tabs or a navigation drawer, but with the new functionality and destinations, Navigation UI helped us greatly to organize the navigation in the app. We didn't really need to do much except for adding the UI components and matching the menu item and destination IDs. In the next episode, we'll see how to implement conditional navigation to enable or disable navigating to coffee list. So make sure you stay tuned for the next episode, or I guess in YouTube terms, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, navigation and navigation UI to all your Android apps. And I'll see you in the next episode.